some important properties for triangular matrices. The transpose of a lower triangular matrix is upper triangular matrix, and the transpose of an upper triangular matrix is always lower triangular matrix. Next property, the product of lower triangular matrices is always lower triangular matrix, and the product of the upper triangular matrices is always upper triangular matrix. A triangular matrix is invertible if and only if its diagonal entries are all non-zero. The inverse of an invertible, this is the part that the students usually miss, lower triangular matrix is lower triangular matrix, and the inverse of an invertible upper triangular matrix is upper triangular matrix. So in general, is make sure to mention that you have an invertible triangular matrix. A triangular matrix is not necessarily invertible. Can you come up with an example? Okay, let's take a look at this lemma here. Suppose that a matrix A is upper triangular matrix and you wanna show that as an invertible matrix, it has inverse B, and then B is also upper triangular matrix. Let us begin. We're going to prove by induction, everybody. It means that we're going to take a two by two matrix and analyze that, then generalize the idea to upper dimension matrices. We're going to consider a base case of a two by two matrix. Remember that. A times B is equal to identity matrix. It means that your matrix has an inverse like B. In that case, if you do the multiplication for the entries of the matrix A and its inverse, A to one times B one and one plus A two two times B two one is equal to zero. Please note that a sub two and one must be equal to zero. Why is that? Because your matrix is an upper triangular matrix. Therefore, A sub two two, B sub two one must be equal to zero. Note that the entry on the main diagonal, A sub two and two, doesn't need to be zero. So B sub two and one must be equal to zero for the statement, a times B, B equals to identity matrix. Therefore, B must also be a triangular matrix, which is an upper triangular matrix. Now you can generalize the case to higher sizes of the matrix. Suppose you have an N by N matrix like A, and its inverse is B. Note that any column J, except J equals to N itself, has summation equal to zero. You're basically finding the dot product, everybody. However, A sub N and N is the only non-zero entry of A in its sum. So you can basically say that A sub N and N, B sub N and J is equal to zero. And since A sub N and N cannot be zero, you must be able to conclude that B sub N and J is always zero for any j that is not equal to n. Since a and b are inverse of each other, a times b is equal to b times a is identity matrix. So considering that the multiplication of b and a is equal to identity matrix, we can similarly multiply row j of b with column one of a, and then for any j that is not equal to one, we know that the summation is equal to zero. And if you simplify that, you get A sub one and one, B sub J and one. So since A sub one and one is not zero, we must we conclude that B sub J and one is equal to zero. Basically by induction, the inverse of A without the first column and row is upper triangular matrix. So we just showed that the first column and the last rows satisfy the conditions for upper triangular matrix. Therefore, 
the inverse of an n by n upper triangular matrix is also an upper triangular matrix.